it is perhaps <coughs> it is perhaps not an exaggeration to suggest <laughs> um, or as I feel it anyway that we live in troubled times um, troubled times here in the Netherlands, but also globally. As, and for my feeling as well, troubled times very much in, 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 in Europe, as we try to, in, in my feeling, contend with the afterlives of the colonial past and how that structures our relationship in the present. For a long time, one would suggest that museums were outside of these conversations. That museums were not a part of this kind of conversation of what does it mean to engage with a, uh, an ongoing colonial project, or if one wants to call it the post-colonial, or however one would name it, what Anstola would call to engage with the duress or the durabilities of, of a colonial project that still is in the workings of how we engage with one another, how we structure or the narratives about our nation state, and how we try to deal with the shifting of these national polities around us. But right now, as this program that we've pulled together will attest, museums, and in particular ethnographic museums, are at the center of these discussions in some way or another, for good or for bad. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. <laughs> I wanted to start out with that kind of doom. <laughs> and to end, I will end on a, uh, on a more hopeful note, as for this year, it is my mantra to say that I am very pessimistic, but hopeful. And so I will end with the hope, and the hope is, is exactly what is going to be constituted here over the next two days. My name is Wayne Modest, and today I head the Research Center for Material Culture that is staging this, this event that is part of the National Museum of World Cultures. And for those of you who may know or may not know, the National Museum of World Cultures um, is uh, bringing together of the Tropel Museum, the Museum Volker Kunda, and the Africa Museum together into one umbrella bringing collections together, bringing histories together, bringing curatorial expertise together, and in some ways, bringing all of the problems that all of these institutions have together as we try to contend with what to do with colonial things in the present. Together, these institutions hold over five, uh, and I, I should say that more recently, whereas the NMVV, as we call it, was formed in 2014 um, after hectic times, for example, for, for specifically for the Tropa Museum. We, um, earlier this year, um, started to work in a very, very close collaboration, institutional collaboration with the World Museum in Rotterdam, also an institution that was going through heavy times. So one could suggest that if one were to look at these difficult times that both the Tropel and the World Museums were facing, then one could they were facing these heavy times within a political landscape that I have described elsewhere as one marked by an anxiety politics, an anxious politics for the present and future of Europe. And the present and future of Europe marked around those who are understood as belonging, those who are um, shuffling the, the, the very understanding we have of what, what, what it means to be Europe or European, and the museums are at the center of that kind of discussion. Together, we own, we, we, we care for over 500,000 objects, and over a million, well, one could say it, it always, I, I, let me give you the official thing, between 700,000 and a million photographs drawn from across the world. What does it mean to live with those kinds of objects? What does it mean to curate that kind of collection? What does it mean to en engage with the multiple epistemes and ontologies that those collections um, evidence? But also, what does it mean that those collections were brought together within the wake, within a structure, within an economy of the, a colonial project that we continue to think of as ongoing today? 
Those are the kinds of questions that we in the museum, but also at the RCMC, try to think about on an ongoing basis. It is what animates our project and animates our work within not only the research center, but also in our curatorial projects as well. So if you go to the Tropa Museum and you have time, if you're not from here, then there is an exhibition about the, um, the presence of the colonial past, which tries to examine what does it mean to live in the afterlife of the colonial. And in the coming years, these are conversations that we'll continue to have. Our Africa Museum, which is in Birkendal, will be re renovated. And a part of the renovation is going to be asking, what does it mean to work with a collection that emerged in a particular context, but now is going to be mobilized to speak about Africa today or tomorrow? And what might it mean to be able to do that? So that is a part of the work that we continue to do here and a part of the question that we want to, will animate our two day discussions today, um, over the next two days. Because if anything else, one of the things that I've felt recently is that whether or not it is named under diversity, decolonization, or, and I use those two terms, mobilizing the work of some activists who actually, and forgive my French, who recently say, fuck diversity, let's decolonize. So I use those two words together as, as a part of that structure of thinking that is happening today, or the numerous conferences that I've gone, organized through some of you here. For example, Larissa, who sits in front and who we will hear from later. Um, Claudia, who is from um, um, Vienna. That I almost feel that colonialism has become fashionable. One could even suggest in a very, very, very strange way, an anxious and uncomfortable way, that there's a kind of colonial conference tourism going on, where we are moving each other from one to the other to talk about the same thing. And the question is, do we push the discussions further, or are we in, in inviting each other into our room to just hug each other and ask good questions about which we are comfortable, and then little changes? I would suggest that in my time within the ethnographic museum world, that things have definitely changed. 10 years ago, and I am going to even criticize myself here, 10 years ago when, I, when one would sit in a space with many museum colleagues and use the word colonial, one would get irritation. The irritation within ethnographic museums would come with the statement that comes after, but all of our collections aren't colonial. Stop now. <laughs> This has changed significantly to where almost every ethnographic museum across Europe today that is doing a refurbishment is now insisting on thinking about the colonial genealogies of their collection. And I would suggest for better or for worse. I don't know, we will see. Most recently in Vienna, there is an exhibition opening, the reopening of the, the, wor the World Museum in Vienna, in Austria where at its core was a, a deep conversation about those colonial genealogies. I was at an exhibition in Bremen that discussed the colonial as a part of the Kunsthall in Bremen and what that might mean in relationship to Germany's, German colonialism. There was an exhibition curated by Heike, who is here in Berlin, which was about German, German colonialism. Exhibitions opened recently in Denmark, in Copenhagen, about the same thing. So this marks a very diff different moment. And one of the challenges for us, and what I would like us to think through this morning and tomorrow, is what is that specific moment? What is the conjuncture? What, what is at stake now which makes this speakable, which makes it possible for us to fashion these sorts of exhibitions that wasn't possible or easily done 10, 15 years ago, even seven, eight years ago. What is this specific moment that makes the colonial, uh, uh, thinking about the colonial possible? And I, that is the question that will animate my own interest over the next two days. But the people who have invited here today will engage with starting with a conversation of from curators who've been curating these exhibitions across Europe or reflecting on them 
to dealing with some of the more the other uh, more germane issues for for these collections. And one of the issues that I want to highlight this morning is the issue of the law, which we are going to attend to tomorrow. And why I want to attend to um, just think about that one in a little way. Perhaps it's because of Macron's statement yesterday, <laughs> which um, some of you might have seen, uh, which opens the possibility for France giving back objects, uh, which um, to my mind was the first that such a statement has been made from a president. But one of the difficulties with conversations about restitution and return, which has also animated a lot of our conversation recently, is the statement, but it was the law at the time. It was the law to have that kind of property at the time. And I'm interested very much in that because as we think more and more, for example, our museums next year in October will hold, host the Benin Dialogue, what is called the Benin Dialogue. As we think more and more about that, I'm wondering whether or not we can hold to that statement and what does it mean to say, but it was the law at the time. Might it be interesting for us to probe, to think again about the fact that the same law at the time which made it possible to have the kind of property was the same law at the time that structured a particular kind of inequality which made some people inhuman. And what might it mean to bring those two things together? Or the same epistemic frame that would suggest that some of the objects, the very objects that we have, that we've come to think of as things, for many people were not just things, but actually, in a very interesting way, we're also humans. What might it mean for us to engage in this kind of thinking as we try to, to contend with the present and try to structure a particular kind of other role for our kind of museums in the future? Because if it is one thing that the National Museums of World Cultures has been dealing with over time recently, is that we have been at the center of a contested debate, a really contested debate about these colonial things and its relationship to those citizens who feel that they were on the other side, the negative side of the colonial project. This conference today falls in a part of a bigger conversation that we've having earlier this year. We had a, 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 a and I'm, this is a going to be marketing, I'm sorry. But um, we've, been, we've been less afraid of just getting into the conversation. And so what we've been doing is that we organize these massive events at the Tropo Museum, just to talk about colonialism and its afterlives. And whereas before we thought that it would not be successful because nobody would come, the last one we had, over a two and a half hour period, had 1,500 people who came to the conversation. So there's something else as well about the, 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 the framework within which we sit and how people are very much involved in the conversation about how we structure a present and future in the wake of the colonial. One of the last things that I will just want to point out is that um, if on the one hand, there is a conversation about exhibitions and other things. One of the more fervent discussions that I've seen, especially in the German context and which we might engage with today, is the idea of provenance study, which has taken on a new life as well. What does it mean to have these collections? And in a way, I was in one of those discussions. I don't remember which one of the cities in Germany I was at at the time, because <laughs> there have been four of them. And one of the parts of the discussion was the, 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 the feeling that we get, the anxiety that we get as, as, as curators when the discussion of provenance comes up, and the idea that everybody ties the word provenance with giving back, and then there is this, always this feeling of tension and so one of the things I proposed then is that should we engage in those discussion as part of just what, what I call then a kind of horizon of impossibility. It is too difficult. We don't have the money. We don't have the staff. We, we can't give it back because of the law. Or to ask another question, what horizons of possibility do these discussions afford us? 
what relationships, what really rethinking of the legal framework, what possibility for actually contending with the very collections that we have to just know a little bit more about them. So I hope that today and tomorrow will be about that possibility, that we'll be open to a discussion to try and make each other uncomfortable with the question while providing a framework where people are comfortable enough to answer questions and think together. This conference is co-organized by or supported by a wonderful research project that we are a part of called COHERE, which is led by a group of scholars um, at Newcastle University and with, with my colleague here from the University of Amsterdam, um, Chiara, um, who will chair this morning's session. And COHERE marks also a, a change in the research work that has been done now in these areas because at the heart of a project such as COHERE or the other project that we are a part of called SWITCH is the question, what do we do in the afterlife of the colonial? As our cities, our urban spaces, our nation states are refiguring and we are struggling to understand what those histories, how those histories play in the discussions in the present as we try to structure future possibilities. So I need to shout out COHERE to say thank you for the funding, <laughs> but also for the thinking framework that we've been a part of. So over the next two days, I invite you to be a part of this discussion, a discussion that we hope will lead to a publication or several publications. But as we try to reckon with the colonial past and its afterlife in the present, and what it means to live with colonial things in our museums, but even in our homes, because that is also a part of what we, we are here are thinking about. I would like to say that this, we will run today um, two sessions, and then after we have the pleasure of hosting um, our Herbrand's fellow for, for, for um, this evening, um, Professor Tony Bennett, who many of you might know, having read the book Birth of the Museum and several of his other books. So that will be um, later on today. And then we can convene again tomorrow for other discussions with, 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 with scholars. I'd, for, before I leave, I'd like to just say thanks to everybody who came from far. We've congregated a, a very interesting team of legal scholars, acad um, um, anthropologists, sociologists, historians, but also artists from all across the world. And for that, we are very, very pleased and thankful that you made the trip from Australia. I know that 36 hours of travel is not easy to come for a talk. Um, so we're thankful for that. And we have those hashtag, that's hashtag, yeah? Sorry, I'm old, I don't know what this hashtag thing is. Those two things, hashtag things, so if you want to do Twitter tweet, if you want to criticize, it's fine. Um, that's what we're here for, as we, the younger people in our group anyway, who know how to do that, as we try to think together. Um, I must not, not necessarily apologize. I, I, I'm here in, in the stead of my director, Stein Skonevort, so I, I am deputizing on his, in his stead, and he will be here later on today and tomorrow. So welcome, enjoy, and please, Make it a conversation. I don't want you to just sit there, ask difficult questions. We're used to it. And I am here and Kiara is here to protect the speakers <laughs> while you throw stones at them. May I invite my um, Kiara to come as she moderates the um, next panel. <laughs>